The animal kingdom is a big, wide, wonderful world, but sometimes it's also pretty weird. It turns out that there's a ton of animals that seem like they might belong in a galaxy far, far away instead of our own, but all of these creatures are very real. Imagine an antelope, graceful, delicate, pretty, right? Now put an elephant's trunk on it, but only about the first quarter. Now you've got the Saiga antelope. Seeing one of these in their natural habitat requires a trip to Kazakhstan, Mongolia, or Russia, and it's a site that's rapidly disappearing. Saiga horns are prized for their reputed medicinal qualities in China, and that means these animals are being widely poached. If that wasn't enough, a mass die-off in 2015 claimed the lives of around 200,000 animals, and that has put serious pressure on the species as a whole. And they've already survived a lot. Scientists say these weird-faced creatures are little changed from when they swarmed across the steppe in huge numbers during the last ice age. That's also when they became so ridiculously fast. Adults can easily hit speeds up to 50 miles an hour, a defense mechanism that was necessary for their survival against predatory Ice Age cats. Unfortunately, it's their Ice Age ancestry that might be part of the problem. They're incredibly susceptible to a particular kind of bacteria that spreads in the heat, and as their native habitat gets hotter, it's entirely possible that they're going to continue sliding towards extinction. Somehow, all the ugly in the bird world got wrapped into one unsettling species that some call the Undertaker bird. The marabou stork definitely has a Walking Dead sort of vibe, from heads that look like they've gone way past their expiration date to their tendency to poop on themselves to keep cool. It's an understatement to say that these are not pleasant-looking birds. While they might not be winning any beauty pageants, they're still a crucial part to the African ecosystem, and they're pretty much nature's garbage disposals. They're often found eating fish from ponds and lakes that have dried up or disappeared, cleaning up carcasses, and some even become permanent residents at human garbage dumps. They eat an almost shocking amount, and have been seen tearing off and swallowing pieces of carcasses weighing up to two pounds. In spite of their icky appearance, they're credited with helping keep a handle on decaying material, and in turn, preventing the spread of bacteria and illness. Not every creature is pretty, but they can still be pretty important. There's a ton of stories about researchers who have taught an octopus the whole tricks for treats thing, much in the same way dogs or human toddlers can be taught. That's created all kinds of debate about just how intelligent the members of the cephalopod family are. While the title of smartest is still up for grabs, National Geographic has said that the title of cutest goes to the Dumbo octopus. So named for its set of ear-like fins, there's around 15 different species of little Dumbo octopuses. They tend to have stumpy little arms and an average size comparable to a pet guinea pig. Dumbos live as far down as 13,000 feet, which makes them the deepest divers of the octopods. Since they live at such deep depths, they don't really have any serious predators. Consequently, they don't have the ink sac that other octopus species sports as a deterrent, and they don't have a particular breeding season either. Instead, the male Dumbo octopus hands over what the Ocean Conservatory describes as a handy-dandy sperm packet which the female carries with her until she's ready to lay her eggs. Those eggs will each form a fully formed little Pokemon, or octopus, that's ready and waiting to start living a sweet little deep sea life. In the 1790s, a new invention was allowing for the transmission of communications over a long distance. That was the semaphore, and it turns out that humans aren't the only species that had this idea. In 2006, a team from the BBC was filming deep in the rainforest of Panama when they came across a little golden frog aptly, if unimaginatively, named the Panamanian Golden Frog. Since the frog's natural habitat was filled with all kinds of noise from rushing streams and rivers, their little voices tended to get lost in the noise. The answer? Semaphore. The little frogs were seen waving their arms and legs in regular patterns that were translated into things like, you're cute, wanna be my date, and fight me bro. Both males and females have been observed using the semaphore communication, and according to the Maryland Zoo, they don't even have external ears anymore. No need. There's some bad news here, though. The BBC team was there just in time to see the frogs in their native habitat for what might have been one last time. A fungus swept through the population, leaving scientists scrambling to rescue and disinfect some of the frogs to be taken back to captivity. The frog population was already threatened by things like deforestation and pollution, and now it's believed they're extinct in the wild. There's a lot of really weird things living in the world's oceans, and one of the weirdest things is the aptly named sea pen. At a glance, that's exactly what it looks like, an old-timey quill pen that someone stuck into the seafloor and then forgot about. The weird thing is, this isn't exactly an animal, it's a bunch of animals all hanging out together in a super neat symbiotic relationship. It forms when a series of polyps attach to each other. 
One becomes a primary polyp and forms a stem, while the other is attached to create the feathery appearance. That's not all for show, either, and all of those other polyps develop special skills. Some only circulate water, some only filter out plankton to feed the entire little colony, and there are some that are devoted solely to reproduction. The whole colony works together to ensure the survival of the community, and there's something here that people can absolutely learn from. The wildlife trusts add that there are different species of sea pens with different ways of discouraging marine life that might like to graze on them. Some are phosphorescent, some are narcotic, and some can hide in the bulb that secures them to the seafloor. Audubon calls the Watson a genetic mystery, and that pretty much sums it up. Sure, this Amazonian rainforest-dwelling creature is technically a bird, but it's really just bad at being a bird. It starts right from birth, because when Watson chicks hatch, they come out equipped with some distinctly dinosaur-like claws. These claws aren't just useless leftover appendages, either. When predators invade the Watson nest, the chicks can take a nosedive over the side and into the rivers below. Not only can they swim to shore, but they then quite literally claw their way back up their tree after the danger is passed. They're the only birds that eat nothing but leaves, so it follows that they have a unique digestive system, which is responsible for the birds' relentless methane burps. Those who have gotten close to Watson say they smell a bit like cow poop. That's kind of fitting. Their digestive tracts are similar to cows, and they have a process that is very much like chewing cud. So much of their internal structure is dedicated to digestion that it came at the cost of their ability to fly, which they can technically do, just not well. Oh, and that smell? That's why they're called the stink bird. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, and is that your contribution to society, you gassy ribeyes? Their appearance has been compared to the 150 million year old Archaeopteryx, and it's thought that they branched off the evolutionary tree around 65 million years ago. No one else joined them. Pictures of a super shiny metallic looking horse make the rounds on social media every so often, and it's easy to scoff at. For sure, that's just the kids these days feeling it's necessary to Photoshop everything, isn't it? Not in this case, at least. Those pictures we're talking about are absolutely real, and those gorgeous horses with the metallic coats are a breed called the Akalteke. According to the Livestock Conservancy, the Akalteke comes in a variety of colors, but it's the gold that's most common, and which shows off the metallic shine the best. It's not a trick of the camera. The Akalteke has a unique hair structure that acts as a prism, bending and refracting light that strikes it. The result is a super shiny coat, no matter what the color. Even not taking their dramatic shine into consideration, they're pretty unique horses. They're one of the oldest breeds in the world and are immediate descendants of the Scythian horses that were around some 3,000 years ago. They're extraordinarily intelligent, and in spite of their slender, delicate appearance, they're hardy enough to travel hundreds of miles across harsh terrain with little food or water. According to University of Technology Sydney research fellow Hollis Taylor, the Australian lyrebird can mimic any sound it hears. Taylor says that although lyrebirds are incredibly shy, researchers have been able to record them making a wide array of mimicking calls. That's pretty cool, but there's a catch. In spite of what the occasional viral internet video might try to get you to believe, they're not out in the forest making laser beam sounds. But one might say, I've seen the video. Go on, explain it then. Taylor does. The birds in the video were hand-raised in captivity. They learned sounds from humans around them, a situation that would not occur in the wild. And there's another bit of weirdness. Lyrebirds, wild and captive, have been recorded making sounds like background noises of a steampunk city. They're clicking, whirling, and grinding noises that sound like something a clockwork bird might make, but that's just their natural calls. The lyrebird's skills have been traced to a uniquely built syrinx, which is a bird's version of the voice box. That seems to have something to do with their unique calls. And they are unique. Lyrebird parents pass their individual songs on to their children, and those children sing the same unique, familial songs that scientists have heard passed down through the decades. Some animals look like they were made for hugging, and the Garanook definitely qualifies. With their giant ears, big eyes, and little tiny faces, the only thing cuter than grown-up Garanooks are the little ones. It's not clear how many baby Garanooks could fit in a standard-sized pocket, but it's a line of scientific inquiry that should be pursued. Not really. Leave wildlife in the wild, kids. See them just walking through their native African habitat, and they look like very, very slender antelope. It's when they start to eat that the weirdness happens, because according to the African Wildlife Foundation, they don't eat grass or drink water. Instead, they stand on their rear legs and use their front hooves like hands, reaching up to grab high branches and pull them down within the reach of their long necks. 
That allows them to graze on tree branches hanging as high as eight feet, vastly increasing their access to food. Still, that's only helped them survive in their natural habitat, and it doesn't really take into account the hunters that see them as delicious instead of adorable. According to the University of Michigan, they're listed as near-threatened on the IUCN Red List. Someone really should have a chat with whoever named the Sunda Flying Lemur, because not only is it not a lemur, but it can't even fly. I can think of at least two things wrong with that title. Don't worry, that's definitely not the weirdest thing about it. This cute little not lemur is native to the forests of Southeast Asia, and while it can't fly, it can glide for such long distances that it's easy to see how someone could make a mistake. Technically, this little animal is something called the Kaluko, which is a species characterized by their gliding ability, as well as teeth they can use as a comb to keep parasites out of their fur. They're also proof that nature never runs out of surprises. In 2017, scientists hanging out in the Sunda Flying Lemur's home turf thought they were recording ultrasonic bat calls when they realized the noises they were picking up weren't from bats at all. They had made the first recordings of the completely adorable little glider's ultrasound chatter. While it's not clear what they were talking about, researchers suspect that the nearby group of seven flying lemurs were using the calls to talk about the human intruders. It kind of makes you wonder who else is talking about us behind our backs, doesn't it? Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.